Problem 1.56. This is an steady one-dimensional conduction case in which we have a silicon wafer going through an annealing process. Because of this annealing process, we have radiation flux, which is going to be added to the upper surface of the wafer. The system is under vacuum conditions, therefore, there is no convection taking place. We know the thickness of the wafer, we know the bottom surface temperature of the wafer, and we know the surrounding temperature. We want to find that if we are able to avoid warping, therefore we need to calculate the change in the temperature from the upper to the lower surfaces. This value needs to be lower than 2 Celsius, and we need to find out whether or not this condition is met with the information that is provided. We start the analysis by a balance of energy, in this case a balance of fluxes. The flux going in and the flux leaving. Notice that we do not have an energy that is generated in the case is steady, so the balance of energy reduces to zero. The flux going in has two components, one that is going to be due to the radiation that is being absorbed, and the other component is due to conduction. The energy leaving the system, in this case, is going to be radiation that is due to emission. If we substitute the components into the energy balance, we get we have the radiation due to absorption, we have the flux that is due to conduction, and we have the flux due to radiation and emission. Now let's see. The radiation due to absorption is simply going to be gamma and the amount of flux due, due to the annealing process. The conduction is given by the Fourier law. We simply have K dt dx. And if we have the radiation due to emission, we simply have passivity, Boltzmann constant, the temperature of the wafer in the upper surface to the fourth power, minus the surrounding temperature to the fourth power. And this is equal to zero. Assuming that the temperature is linear, notice that we could rewrite the TDX simply as the temperature from the upper of the wafer minus the temperature at the lower bound divided by the thickness between them, L. This is the final equation that we get after all the values have been plugged in. What we're looking for is the temperature at the upper surface of the wafer. Notice that over here is in the first degree and over here is in the fourth degree. This is not a very easy polynomial to solve. What we would like to use is the fact that we know the value of delta t. In this case, delta t is equal to 2 Celsius. Using that value, we could find that the maximum value that we could have in the upper surface, and that is going to give us 1272 Kelvin. What we're going to do now is plug in this value of the temperature in the upper surface into this part over here. That is going to give us 1731 and we're going to compare it to this value over here. Notice that using a delta T of 2 Celsius, we evaluate the energy that is being absorbed and the energy that is being dissipated. For this particular problem, the energy that is being absorbed by the wafer, it's a lot higher than the energy that is being dissipated. Therefore, the wafer will warp. Please make sure to do the calculations on your own to be able to get the same numbers, the same units, and the same conclusion.